Okay, welcome to lecture 6.2. Um, I'm going to introduce the concept of generalized speeds and also uh, the, um, the kinematical differential equations. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about dynamics here. So if you recall Newton's second law, And then we'll just do it for a single particle. The uh, equation is the sum of all the forces on that particle must equal, and that's vector, mass times acceleration, right? In a scalar view, we would have um, something that looks like uh, maybe in each x, y, and z direction, some sum of the forces times the mass times the acceleration. We know that the acceleration of the particle is the second time derivative of its position, right? So this is a second order ordinary differential equation. Second order. Right, um, the time derivative, the second time derivative of this uh, variable indicates this second order, and it's a second order in x. Okay, but uh, this equation um, can equivalently be written as two first order equations. So if I write f equals m v dot, right, the velocity single time derivative of that would be acceleration. And I introduce that this variable v as x dot, then I have two first order ordinary differential equations in x. So ordinary differential equations in uh, x but it's technically in x and v, okay? These two uh, equations are equivalent, and we introduce this variable v here, and that you see is a, a velocity or a speed type of term. So we're gonna do something similar. We're gonna wanna write our equations of motion eventually in a first order form, um, and introducing a variable like v is going to help us to do that. So we will introduce in generalized speeds. And we're going to generally call them uh, U's. So U1, 2, oops, 0 no crashed, 1, 2, Oops, now where do I want to save this here? Here. Okay, so we introduce in generalized speeds u1 to un. These are scalar variables. Um, and if I put them all, stack them all together in a column vector, then I'll have u, the vector, which is also um, of n dimensions. And then we're going to define these new variables such that this equation holds. And I'll write it in vector form. So U, they're going to be defined as a matrix Y, little k, times Q dot plus Z k, the column vector. So it's a linear function of the q dots. So we have a basically a simple linear 
um, matrix equation here and uh, our definition of the speeds these generalized speeds always have to be linear in the q dots so generalized speeds um, are oops. Excuse me, or I'll just say must be linear in the speeds in the Q dots. And a second criteria for this definition is that this matrix YK must be invertible. All right, sorry for the pause there, but uh, generalized speeds must be linear in the Q dots, and this matrix YK must be invertible, um, such that we can solve for the Q dots. in this way. And I'm out of room, new page. So we should be able to um, explicitly express the Q dot terms by inverting YK and formulating that equation there. So this equation and the one above, right? They we have these uh, single derivative terms, and that makes them differential equations. And we actually name these. Um, so this this is called the or these are called um, the kinematical differential equations. So they only relate to the kinematics. We have um, configuration variables, motion variables, and then these generalized speeds that we've introduced. So the kinematical differential equations, and they're a set of first order ordinary differential equations um, in uh, the variables Q and U. All right, so those are the kinematical differential equations. The next thing I wanna talk about is choosing generalized speeds. So you, you get to choose them, right? Uh, as long as they fit this equation, this definition of U. Or K must be invertible, and they must be linear in the Q dots. So choosing generalized speeds. <clears throat> So let's go back to the Chaplikin sleigh. And I'm just going to rewrite the coordinates in terms of Q's so that we can think about it in the terms of the Q's and the U's that we that I've just been talking about. So Let's set x equal to q1, y equal to q2, and theta equal to q3. So then we could write that velocity of the point P in the center of the sleigh in N. And if we recall, um, if I replace uh, with the q terms, I would get um, an equation that looks like this.
Okay, and I'm using um, the shorthand notation here that the sine of QI is going to be SI, and the cosine of QI would be CI. Um, and then we also have omega of A and N equals Q3 dot AZ. All right, so two um, velocity terms there. So we're going to make uh, first a choice in generalized speeds. Um, and there are an infinite number of choices that you could make, uh, theoretically. But here, I'm going to say that the u's are simply equal to the q dots. All right, the so u's equal to the q dots. Um, what does that mean then? We have uh, then to replace our velocities, we would end up with a uh, u1 c3 plus u2 s3 sine 3 ax plus a negative u1 s3 plus a u2 c3 in the ay if we make those replacements <coughs> excuse me and then uh, the omega of a and n equals u3 az right so we make that choice i replace um, in the velocity the uh, q dots with the respective u and then we can figure out what the y k and the zk terms are if we have uh, those in place. Um, in this case it's very simple uh, that yk is just going to be the identity matrix and zk is zero. Okay so that our equation um, u equals i q dot is all that all there is so that's a simple case we can make another choice though that may be more interesting um, here I'm going to say that u1 equals the measure number of the velocity of p and n in the ax direction and then u2 is going to be the velocity of p and n measure number in the a y direction and then u3 will make it the uh, measure number of omega of a of n in the a z direction so i'm just taking components of the velocities setting those equal to u if i do so then i find out that u1 equals q1 dot c3 plus q2 dot sine of q3 u2 equals negative q1 dot sine of q3 plus q2 dot cosine of q3 All right and then u3 same as before will just be q3 dot so now i can see that i have something that's linear in the q dots so that's good and we can write then our yk matrix is going to be a three by three. Uh, for the first u, we'll have just the coefficients for the columns. And then zk is still zero in this case. We have no extra terms there. And then we'll have a u equal to u1, u2, u3. So is yk invertible? Uh, in this case it is. And if you 
apply some Gaussian elimination, you can solve that system of equations. So if we solve for the u dots, um, then you'll find that you can simplify these to q1 dot equals u1 c3 minus u2 sine q3 q2 dot equals u1 sine 3 plus u2 c3 dot and q3 dot is u3 of course so I can solve these equations. I defined my generalized coordinates here. Sorry, generalized speeds here. And then I can invert that YK matrix and solve for the Q dot. So I have a valid choice of generalized speeds. Um, and then the final note here is in practice, Choosing the U's, the generalized speeds, to be components of uh, problem dependent or system dependent or problem important, system important velocities and angular velocities. can simplify uh, acceleration calculations uh, giving us simpler expressions of the accelerations and the velocities in that case too and um, but you can always select that the u dots, sorry, that the u's, the generalized speeds equal the q dots, right? Okay, so that's what I wanted to say here. The uh, summary is that we can introduce these new variables u, the generalized speed, they need to be in this form such that uh, yk is invertible and they're linear in the q dots um, that lets us solve for the q dots we call these the kinematical differential equations and we can choose many different um, choices uh, they're typically going to be measure numbers of different velocity terms and they're going to help potentially simplify the equations that we calculate after this. So if we have simpler velocity terms, our um, acceleration terms may, may look simpler. Our constraint equations also may uh, be simpler. And uh, they have some advantages as we uh, work through that. But you can always choose the simplest version and, um, and it's fine. So any are valid as long as they meet the rules here.